circumstances. Today, Joyce will explain as she answers the question, can you fix my bad attitude? Do you know that an attitude changes everything? A good attitude can give you an above average life and a bad attitude will always give you a below average life. In Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, verse 22 says, strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and discard your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and delusions that spring, lusts and desires that spring from delusions. So he's saying, stop acting like you used to before you were saved. Now, how many of you know that even though we are saved and we do have a new nature, that we can go get that old nature out of the closet and put him on if that's what we feel like doing. So you gotta kinda keep him dead. He's dead, but you gotta remind him that he's dead. So he says, put off that old nature, and let's just skip verse 23 for a minute. And verse 24 says, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image, God-like in true righteousness and true holiness. So the simplicity is stop acting like you used to and start acting like you ought to. Very simple. Well, how do I do that? Verse 23 is the bridge. It's the bridge from the old life to the new life. And be constantly, everybody say constantly. constantly. They see passive people are not too big on constantly. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, love the Amplified, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Is there anybody here who had a bad attitude about anything today? The rest of you need deliverance or I don't, you know. <laughs> Listen, I don't remember exactly, but I know that I had at least seven or eight times today when I had to quickly, purposely choose to straighten out my attitude. So I don't care how long you've been saved or how much you pray every morning, <laughs> you are gonna have opportunity to have to decide if you're gonna be purposeful or passive. If you're just gonna kinda go with how you feel. Cause I mean, there was some stuff that happened to me, just not even big stuff, but minor stuff that just didn't make me feel too good. Tonight, I had to try seven times to get my contact lens in my eye. <laughs> and I was not liking that. And then I got my hairspray out and the can wasn't working. It was one of those cans that you squirt and it leaks and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not on the road, I don't have my hairspray, my contact's not working, I'm teaching on attitude. <laughs> Come on. And see, the person who purposes to keep a good attitude, that doesn't mean that he feels like having a good attitude. It doesn't even mean that having a good attitude necessarily seems fair. But he does it because he knows down deep in his heart that the word is true and that if we do things the way God tells us to do them, that we will have what God says that we can have. But there are no shortcuts. I'm telling you the truth. I don't think with all the preaching we've heard on things like this that we still comprehend the power of one attitude. What it can do for us if it's good and what it can do to us if it's bad. Viktor Frankl, while in a concentration camp in Germany, said, the last of the human freedoms and one that nobody can take away is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. So this man is in a concentration camp and they were just being treated unbelievably bad. And he said, there's one thing that Hitler cannot take away from me. And that's my choice to maintain a good attitude. That's amazing, isn't it? Just absolutely amazing. So what are you gonna do? Just spend your whole life telling everybody how life threw you under the bus? I mean, would you rather have that pity than to have power? 
If you'll throw away the pity, then God can give you power. And it all starts with determining, I am going to have a nose-high attitude in my life, no matter what, I am tired of letting the devil keep me down. And see, I'm not saying that you don't have a right to have a bad attitude. Probably many of you do, or a reason, not a right. You have a reason to have a bad attitude, but no right to, because God is willing to set us free. Well, this is a big question. Today, we're asking the question, can you fix my bad attitude? So, Joyce is in the house to help even wow. more. Now, I have to fix bad attitudes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Well, you've, you've been teaching us about the importance of attitude, but that's so basic, but not always that obvious. It's mm -hmm. easy to get wrapped up in a bad attitude and have it change our outlook, have it change the way we deal with people. Right. So. Why is maintaining a good attitude so vital? Well, first of all, to be honest, if we have a bad attitude, we are not going to be happy. I don't think that people realize sometimes how much they can add to their own joy or detract from their own joy. You know, we're always looking for somebody else to make us happy. Yeah. But God has had to teach me that I have to take responsibility for my own joy. You know, the answer to fixing bad attitudes, I guess, would have to be different depending on the bad attitude you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. But let's just take one right now in an answer, partial answer to this question. Let's just say that you have a um, pretty continual unhappy attitude, just a disgruntled, murmuring, mm -hmm. downcast attitude. Well, if I get like that, which thank God, I used to live like that, now I don't get like that very often. I always find that somehow it's connected to thinking about what I don't have or what somebody's not doing for me hmm. instead of seeing what I do have and what people are doing for me. And you know, Ginger, it's pretty easy to start taking the good things in life for granted. Yeah, it is. And you know, I was my husband is so, Dave is just very, complimentary and and affection. I mean, I I get a hug every morning. He he tells me, I mean, before I left home this morning, he told me probably three different times how much he loved me. And you know, there are women that would absolutely love to hear that. Mm -hmm. And yet, I almost caught myself this morning because I was in a hurry and he said come and give me a hug. I almost thought I don't I don't have time to do that. <laughs> and uh I don't want to take things like that for granted. Yeah. I want to stop and really appreciate the things that God is doing for me and that other people are doing for me. And even that God is doing for us through other people. I actually believe when somebody gives you a compliment that it's really God trying to compliment you mm -hmm. and he's using them as a source to do it. And so there are things that we can do to help ourselves. And that would just be one thing that I would say. Well, you have taught about, about five different ways to maintain a good attitude. So I want to ask you about each, each of these five. One is to maintain the right attitude when things get rough. So when life gets difficult, the importance of maintaining a good attitude then. Well, I just was uh, writing a devotional on that this morning. So I think that I can answer that. I do believe that to maintain a right attitude when things get tough, the key is to believe that God loves you, that he's never gonna allow more to come on you than what you can bear, and that he promises to make everything in our life work out good mm -hmm. if we will trust him. And so, you, you know, we, we have a tendency if we listen to the enemy when things are tough to think they're never gonna change. That's, that's really true. I mean, just, well, this, this was never gonna change. Right. I, I'm always gonna be like this, or I always have problems. And everything in life changes, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, how many things has a person gone through before that has changed and they're not going through that anymore? Right. And I recently just had a stomach virus that seemed to last for almost two weeks. Mm. And uh, uh, I ended up having to go to the doctor and get a certain antibiotic. But you know, one of the things, cause you know, people care about you. So they're like, well, how's your stomach? Are you getting any better? And I had to say, nope, not yet. I don't know how many times, but I would always add, but this will pass. It always does. And sure enough, now here the last two days, I've been fine and I'm feeling good. 
So I think if we can resist that temptation to think this is a permanent situation, yeah. because it's not a permanent situation, God does know your problem, and if you're trusting him, and you know the, our confession is so important in what we say and the way we think during these times. Yeah. So maintaining a good attitude partially determines how quick you're going to have your victory. Hmm. And trust is a big word in all of that. So he doesn't say that troubles won't come. Right. But he does say that he won't leave us That's exactly in, the, in right. our troubles. Yeah. All right. The next one is realizing the rough weather won't last forever. And that, that's pretty much what we were just talking about is that, that it's, it, it will change. If at all possible, don't make major decisions in the midst of the storm. That is so important. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, we, um, we want to jump to do something about the problem. But to be honest, if you're hurting real bad or if you're upset or, you've, or if you've had a major disappointment, I wouldn't make any kind of a major decision if I didn't absolutely have to. I guess sometimes you have to, but we think about things so differently. Mm -hmm. You and I were talking about something this morning on my calendar, and uh, my assistant had asked me after a trip, which I'm always tired after a conference, about dates for something in the fall that was going to take two days. And so she reminded me this morning that I wanted to talk to you about could we cut that down to one day in the fall. And I couldn't even remember why I, why I even wanted to cut it down to one day. And I said, I'll bet when you asked me that question, I was tired, wasn't I? And she said, yes, you were. <laughs> so see, yeah. when I was tired, I didn't want to give two days to it. Now I'm like, well, yeah, I don't mind doing two days. So we just think completely differently mm -hmm when we're not emotionally upset about something right. than we do when we are. And when our attitude is bad, then we are going to make choices that are very different exactly. than we would otherwise. Stay in touch with the control tower. Yeah. Well, that means at all times, stay in touch with God. We really need to, I don't know, you know, I've, I've been trying to realize how, I don't want to just pray about something here in the morning I want to pray about a variety of things all throughout the day and to realize that God is always with me and that I can, I, I read something not too long ago that really ministered to me. It said, God is never more than one thought away. Hmm. And I love that. Yeah. You know, I can bring God into my consciousness because he is everywhere all the time. And he does say, I'll never leave you or forsake you. But God can be all around yeah. us. And if we're not aware of him, then it doesn't do us any good. I mean, I know that we've all had times where we say to somebody, well, I didn't see you today. And they were like, well, I was there the whole time. Well, we have to be aware of what's going on around us. And sometimes we're unaware and unconscious. And so just keeping God in your consciousness involves thinking about him more often, talking to him about more things more often. And that's how we stay in touch with the control tower. You know, I really do find also that it's very easy for me to hold on to a bad attitude when I'm talking to a friend about my problems. Yeah, absolutely. I can complain about all kinds of stuff, but when I'm talking to God about it, <laughs> you know, it's different. So that bad attitude tends to melt away as his spirit is, right. is helping me deal with the issue instead yeah. of just complaining about the issue. And there are instances in the Bible where people brought their complaints to God and so I don't think it's necessarily wrong to tell God how you're feeling about something. But boy, I tell you, he's always got a good answer for us. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> always got a good answer for us. And whereas if you go to a friend, they may actually feed into your complaining where God will never do that. Yeah. And then your final point is try to keep everything in perspective. Boy, that's so important. You know, it's like something can seem so terrible. But if you compare that to what could be happening, mm -hmm. you know, when I was dealing with my stomach thing, one of the things that I said is, you know, I don't like the taste in my mouth. Well, one of the things that bothered me about it was I had such a bad taste in my mouth, so nothing I ate really tasted good. I, yeah. I don't like this, but I don't have this. Right. And so there's so many, you know, reasoning with yourself, or I call it having a meeting with yourself, having a conversation with yeah. yourself, actually can really get you out of a bad mood very, very quick. And so when we keep things in perspective, it's like, well, yes, this is happening and I'm not gonna ignore that this is happening, I'm gonna deal with it, 
But hey, thank God this is not happening. Right. Because there's always something worse that could be going on in our lives than what is going on right now. And there's always somebody that's hurting a lot worse than you are. Yeah, that's great perspective. Well, thank you, Joyce. I know you've got a lot of work to do on all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get back to the teaching. But we also want to tell you about a little book that will help so much. And it really is important to have that added encouragement when we need to change our attitude. Picking up something like this, a little book called Victory in Your Mind, Mouth, Moods, and Attitudes can completely turn your day around or someone else's. And this is a great little book to give to someone else. This book is free for you today. And we'll tell you more about it later in the show, but you can get it as a digital download or you can get the physical copy just like this. So stay tuned after the teaching. And we also will have some inspiring stories from social media about forgiveness. And when we can forgive, it completely changes our attitude. So for now, let's return to the teaching where Joyce talks about the man in the Bible who had many reasons to have a bad attitude. I think about Joseph a lot because he just went through some really tough, unfair things. And yet he seemed to just have such a great attitude. I mean, he starts out just because he has a dream, his brothers sell him into slavery and throw him into a pit. But years later, many years later, even after 13 years of being in prison for something that he didn't do and going through several different situations where he was treated really bad. I mean, not just one situation, but several situations where he was treated bad. Have you ever been in several situations where you've been treated bad and unfairly? Amen. And yet he ends up in the palace. And I think sometimes I wish that Genesis said more about how hard it was for him. It doesn't say much. It just, if you just take it at face value, it almost just looks like he just was naturally this happy, wonderful guy that everything was easy for him, easy for him to have a good attitude. But there is one scripture in Psalm 105 that gives us a hint about it maybe being a little bit harder than what it looks like. And it's Psalm 105, 17 and 18. Psalm 105, 17 and 18. And he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant. Now watch this. His feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in chains of iron, and his soul entered into the iron. Now, to be honest with you, some of you probably don't get that. But if you've been through that, then you get that. Because what they're saying is, is that what he went through hurt him so bad that there wasn't even hardly any way to talk about it. And what he went through the imprisonment, the people who lied about him, what his own brothers did to him, knowing how his father must have felt, all the different things he went through, it did something in his soul. And instead of that iron that was around his wrists and his fists controlling him, his soul became like iron. And he was able to do the will of God. But let me tell you something. Anybody who goes through life and maintains a great attitude, it's something you're going to have to do on purpose. You cannot be passive and do it. It has to be purposeful. And we do it for the glory of God. Not just to get a reward, but for the glory of God. How about taking an attitude inventory? If you could describe your attitude in life by choosing one of the following four songs... Which one would it be? You now have the pleasure of hearing me sing. Well, I doubt it'll be a pleasure, but here goes. Here's the four songs. Make the world go away. Get it off of my shoulders. Is that your song? Or how about raindrops keep falling on my head? Or the Frank Sinatra song, I'll do it my way. That was my song. Or does this song describe your attitude? Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Well, see, that's always been my husband's song. He wakes up in the morning singing that song, and I am like, oh, my 
Every once in a while, I shock him, and I jump out of bed saying, oh, what a beautiful morning, oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> Let's go home again. Which of the four songs describes your attitude? Make the world go away? <laughs> Raindrops keep falling on my head. I'll do it my way. Or sing unto the Lord a new song. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Very many places in the Bible, it says, sing unto the Lord a new song. And I kind of think that it means more about, let, let's just get a new song in our life. Let, let's quit singing the same old sad song all the time. What about me? What about me? What about me? Woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Raindrops keep falling on my head. I'll do it my way. Amen. I'd like to suggest that we all stop justifying bad attitudes. Come home from work at night with a bad attitude, take it out on your family. Well, I had a bad day at work. Well, woohoo. <laughs> Maybe your wife had a bad day at home. Amen? Well, I don't feel good. Well, we all don't feel good some days. That doesn't give us a license to be mean to people. Amen. How many of you realize that we justify a lot of our bad attitudes? And I, you know what I've found out for me? As long as I'm making an excuse for something, I can never get over it. I cannot get beyond it as long as I'm making an excuse for it because an excuse means that I'm saying that I know it's wrong, but I'm excusing myself and giving myself a reason to keep doing it. And so I can't do that in my mind. Amen? Isn't this good? I love this. Do you know that maintaining a right attitude is easier than regaining a right attitude? Maintaining a right attitude is easier than regaining a right attitude. You know how I learned this principle? I learned that it's easier for me to keep my peace than it is to be upset for three days and then try to get my peace back. It's much easier when you first sense your attitude sinking to say, nope, nope, been there, done that, not going around that mountain again. See, right, right if, if you catch it right then, you're able to make a decision pretty easy because you haven't allowed all your emotions to get involved in the thing yet. Misery is an option. Say that, misery is an option. So here's the prayer we need to pray. Paul prayed this for the church. He prayed that they would be patient and endure trouble with a good attitude. You know, storms always pass. And spring always comes after winter. It's happened for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Spring always comes after winter. So if you're in the winter of your life right now, spring will come. Amen. This too will pass. Robert Schuller said the good news is that the bad news can be turned into good news when you change your attitude. The good news is that the bad news can be turned into good news when you just change your attitude. Come on. Is anybody in this building need an attitude adjustment? Anybody? Okay. So we can choose to have a good or a bad attitude. Sometimes being positive takes a lot of effort, but choosing to do it can help you through some of your rough circumstances. So we have an offer for you today that just gives you a little extra help, that push when you need it. It is a little booklet called Victory in Your Mind, Mouth, Moods, and Attitudes. And here's the best news, it's absolutely free. Four little chapters in this book can change your life. Thoughts versus words, how they'll affect your attitude. Stop the negative, start the positive, and protect your positivity. This is all help from Joyce, right from God's word. And let me tell you, number one, we all need to work on our attitude. And number two, we can make a difference with God's help. And it might mean as much to you as it does to your family and your friends. So pick this up. And right now, I wanna share with you some responses to our question on Facebook about forgiveness. We asked you to share some things with us 
about how forgiveness has changed your life. And this comes from Della. She says, sometimes I'm put in a spot where I am misjudged or mistreated. I've learned in spite of circumstances to forgive others because Jesus died to forgive their sins as well as mine. And he deserves to be honored in my life. So I forgive and move on. Great advice, Della. Another one here from Bonnie. And Bonnie, wow, this is truly amazing. Bonnie's from Louisiana. And she says, I forgave the murderer of my 22-year-old son. He asked for my forgiveness and said my son was a good man and he didn't mean for it to happen. My heart filled with so much compassion for him. At that moment that I saw him the way our Heavenly Father sees him, his mother messaged me and asked that I visit with her son in prison because he now wants to give his life to Christ. This is such an example of how only God can do certain things in our life. But with him, all things are possible. Bonnie, thank you for sharing that. And we do want to hear from you. We love it when you're out there encouraging one another, sharing your life together. And that's what all of this happening on social media at our Everyday Answers site is all about. So this time, tell us, why did you decide to give your life to Christ? You can do it on Facebook, Joyce Meyer Ministries Facebook page. Do it on Twitter, use hashtag EA. And be right here next time on Everyday Answers. Let's trust God with our pain. Can some of you take your pain tonight and trust God with your pain? Of course, if you have a question, we are always looking to hear from you. Use the hashtag AskJoyce. You can do it on Instagram. You can do it on Twitter. Just make that question really clear, and then we will all search for those answers together directly out of God's Word as Joyce walks us through it.